Okay, this video is a reminder of a practical lesson to do with what we call specific heat capacity. Okay, this is a really important concept. Okay, this is to do with how hard it is to heat materials up. Okay, some materials heat up much more easily than others. Okay, and that we put a number on that and we call that the specific heat capacity. Okay, so you've done this experiment. And the point of this experiment is to work out how much energy it takes to heat up one kilogram of water by one degree C. That is this quantity that we call specific heat capacity. Okay, we can't heat up one kilogram of water because um, it takes a long time to heat it by very much. And we don't want to just warm it up by one degree C because if we do that, um, that's not very accurate because it's quite hard to measure the temperature accurate to one degree C. So... What we did is we got a heater, 40 watt heater, we put it into the water and we put um, 200 grams of water into a beaker and then we tried to find out how long it took to heat it up by 10 degrees C. Okay, It's really important in this that you stir the water because otherwise what happens is you get the water happily boiling away around here and this over here still says the water hasn't warmed up at all. Okay, this is because water is not a very good conductor of heat and the convection takes quite a long time to start um, circul circulating the water round. Okay, so and then we do a calculation which goes like this. So we have to measure the temperature at the start because we want to know how much it's warmed up. So we find it's 23 degrees C when we start. We've heated it up by 10 degrees C, so it's 33 degrees at the end. The temperature rise um, clearly is 10 degrees C. And you measure the time, let's say, for example, it took 4 minutes and 24 seconds. We need to turn that into seconds. Okay, so we need to um, be clear that this is 4 lots of 60 seconds. So the total time we've got is 240 plus 24 is 264 seconds. Then we calculate the energy we put in. Well, energy we know is power times time. Okay, so the power was 40 watts because it's a 40 watt heater. It took 264 seconds. But then you calculate, you'll find that was 10,560 joules. So that's the amount of energy that we put in. So what did we do? We heated up 10, uh, 200 grams of water by 10 degrees C, and that took that to 10,560 joules. Okay, but suppose we only wanted to heat it by 1 degree C instead of 10 degrees C. Okay, well that would only take one tenth of the energy. So that would be 1,056 joules. But we wanted to know the energy to heat a whole kilogram, that's five times as much water, so it would take t five times as much energy. So those results would give you an answer of 5,280. This is the energy to heat up one kilogram of water by one degree C. Okay, the actual number, which they'll always give you on the exam if you need it, is 4,200 joules. So to heat up one kilogram of water by one degree C, takes 4,200 joules. This number is called the specific heat capacity of water. Okay, so just thinking about that, okay, to heat up one kilogram of water from 20 degrees C to 30 degrees C, okay, well it's 4,200 to make it go up by one, but we're making it go up by 10, so it takes 10 times as much, 42,000 joules. If we want to make half a kilogram of water, go from 20 degrees C to boiling, Okay, well that's um, 80 degrees C increase of temperature. Okay, so it's 80 times as much. So 80 times 4,200, uh, 336,000 joules. But we're not heating up a whole kilogram, we're only heating up half a kilogram. So I need to halve that and I get 168,000 joules of energy to do that. Okay, if I want to make, have a bath and I put 100 kilograms of water in the bath and I want to heat it from 20 degrees C to 40 degrees C, how much is it going to take? Well, it's going to take 4,200. We've got to make it 20 degrees C hotter. And we've got 100 kilograms of water. Okay, if I multiply all those two numbers together, then that comes to 8,400,000 joules. Sometimes these numbers seem ridiculously high and you think that must be wrong. But a joule of energy is a very small amount of energy, okay? So it does take a lot of joules of energy to do a relatively straightforward job. Okay, hopefully you can see how to do those. So we've nearly got here, if you look at this, we've got to an equation. And the equation is that the energy we need, okay, is the mass 
times this magical number, which is the same for the same material. So for water, we've been using 4,200, but it's different for different materials. Okay, times the temperature rise. Okay. Okay, so we've worked out we've got this number. 4,200 joules is what I need to heat up one kilogram of water by one degree C. Okay, if I've got two kilograms of water, I need twice as much energy. If I want to heat it up by two degrees C, I need twice as much energy. Okay, and so on. Okay, but this number only applies to water. Okay, different materials have different values. So we're going to try the same experiment, but this time we're going to put a metal block in. We're going to try some different metal blocks, but just do exactly the same experiment with just one slight change, which is this time we're going to heat it up for five minutes. Okay. You can't stir metal, okay, I said on the last bit it was very important that we stirred the water. You can't stir a solid blink, uh, block of metal, okay, but this isn't too important because, of course, metal is a good conductor, so the heat will conduct through the metal quite efficiently. Okay, so here's some possible uh, example results. Let's suppose you had a block, it started off at 20 degrees C, and it ended up at 35 degrees C, so the temperature rise is 15 Okay, the time it takes to do that, 5 minutes, we've got to turn that into 300 seconds. So the time it took to raise the temperature by 15 degrees C was 300 seconds. We know that the power of the heater was 40 watts. We know energy equals power times time. So we had 40 watts times 300 seconds is 12,000 joules. Okay, whoops, yes, 12,000 joules. So to heat up um, one kilogram, this might be true for aluminium, by 15 degrees C took 12,000 joules of energy. Okay, but if I'd only hit one to heat by one degree C, um, so to heat up one kilogram of water by only one degree C would take 800 joules. Okay, so every time I put in 800 joules, this temperature goes up by one degree C. I don't need to worry about this, the mass in this one because we've got one kilogram blocks. So the specific heat capacity of aluminium is 800 joules per kilogram per degree C. 800 joules of energy to heat up 1 kilogram by 1 degree C. So the specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of energy needed to raise 1 kilogram of a substance through 1 degree C. The unit for specific heat capacity, what's written there underneath, joules per kilogram per degree C. And the specific capacity of water, you don't need to learn this, okay, they will give it to you, but it's 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree C. So to heat one kilogram of water by 10, sorry, one kilogram of aluminium by 10 degrees C, okay, well it's 900 to heat up one kilogram by one degree C, we want to heat it by 10 times as much, so it's going to take 9,000 joules. To heat up 10 kilograms by 1 degree C, well, 1 degree C took 900, but now we need 10, so again, our answer is 9,000 joules. To heat up 5 kilograms by 6 degrees C, okay, this is where we need the equation, so 900 for 1 kilogram times 5 kilograms times 6 degrees C uh, is 27,000 joules. Okay. 2 kilogram block of iron is given 10 kilojoules, 10,000 joules of energy, and its temperature rises by 10 degrees C. What is the SHC? Okay, this is getting a bit more complicated now. So we need to look at the equation below and work out the specific capacity is the energy divided by the mass times the temperature rise. Okay, so the energy was 10,000, the mass was 2, the temperature rise was 10. This gives us an answer of 500 joules per kilogram per degree C. Okay, so a little bit of a tricky one at the end there. Um, but normally you'll just be putting numbers into that equation and working out the energy required to do things. Okay, the crucial thing to understand is it depends on the mass of the material, it depends how much you want to heat it up, and it depends on the specific heat capacity of that material. 